gonna go in here probably kill that expansion two sunken colonies might not be enough and he's not really got any ground forces either yeah, and uh, Fantasy, though, I think he's only got about 12 or so Marines there, but he's really, like you were saying, he's only got to deal with these Mutalisks, and he is just going to be able to swat those out of the air. And, uh, yeah, and more Barracks coming up here. I think that he's going to throw down, he's got a 5th coming, and I'm pretty sure he wants to throw down a 6th. Maybe the AI got a little bit screwed up there, and he's not throwing it down just yet. But, uh, yeah, and I think he's actually also looking to expand here. I know with that really fast expand build that he did there, he has a lot of options to go, and fast science vessels I mean hey I didn't see it coming I, I was actually thinking for a second there he was gonna throw out a Valkyrie just for funsies but I mean fast science vessel that works too and we do have lurkers in the field now as well and uh, that medic marine ball is just gonna start growing now that fantasy's got all of his tech up and he has successfully defended the mutilus harass um, taking absolutely no economic damage he's just gonna be in such a perfect position to come out here and just completely walk all over the Zerg, and the Zerg actually Heva expanding to the bottom right there. A little bit tricksy, I think, though, it's going to get stomped all over as soon as Fantasy spots it out. Um, another Overlord in the middle of the field there. No factory to uh, support that attack on that Overlord, but he still takes it down somehow with just Marines. I don't know, usually... Usually it's the factory that gets in that killing blow, but here goes a science vessel about to go down. Is he going to get it? Yeah, he gets it down. So um, a little bit of a loss there, but I still think that Fantasy's in a strong position here. Two base versus a, a somewhat later three base and all the tech up, and now it's just macro stomp mode for Fantasy. And I think he actually has spotted that bottom right, so we're going to see if he starts walking down there. Yeah, he's got the two scans very early, so he's been scanning around a lot, so I think he knows. The nice split from Iva there. You know, I think I'm going to do something unheard of, right? I'm going to say that Fantasy is actually a good a player who's known for these kind of strategies, like the Valkyrie strategy that it was so famous for for failing so many of that he's got so specific on the he's so specific on the timings. And when it works, it's good because what it did here with the early science vessels, it counts as lurkers. If you're gonna go for a fast lurker, it counts as a mutalisks if you time it just right, because that timing on that irradiate was perfect. But the thing is if Zerg would have gone for something nine poolish, then he would have been in a world of hurt. And now, of course, he's got a very nice uh, force macro up here. He needs to be careful. He's got about 15 million science vessels. It would be really, really shameful if he would just now lose all of his uh, M&Ms, but he's not going to do that. But yeah, it was very nicely timed out. And I actually know this from when I was still following the pro scene in eons past that he's he's known for these kind of things and there we go we've been talking about this yes you can nuke those drones from that distance still on this map but yeah it's I yeah 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 this is going to be painful but that ramp is gonna be very difficult and you'll need the science vessels to irradiate the crap out of anything that could damage your marines because of course they like popping like little um, poppy thingies, um, analogies fail me. Uh, just how horribly they will be mutilated if he goes up that ramp yeah, now. So he's just going to shut down the. Oh God, he's had. He's got the hive there. Is gonna. His hive's gonna blow up. Be quick about it, Hiver. You're gonna lose all your tech. Oh God, this is not. Uh, this is not a good situation to be in for the Zerg player here. Um, and losing some lurkers in the middle field as well. I don't think that, oh, there's the Swarm, though, actually. Pretty pretty quick to file attack there. So the Swarm is going to be able to defend that Hive there. However, there's a huge ball of Medic Marine there in the middle of the field, completely uncontested. He's just going to squash all those Zerglings coming up. And a Command Center going up as well. So we are going to see that, uh, that expansion go up, that Mineral only down there. And I think, though, that uh, Fantasy just, I think, ah, uh, God, I forgot to check it. I didn't see his uh, mini-map there. Whether he doesn't he know. That bottom right. Yeah, he doesn't know that the bottom he doesn't right is know. there. Thank you, Greth. So, yeah, see? It's it's a good thing I have you alongside. Otherwise, I wouldn't yeah. have known stuff like that. This is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I love this relationship here, Greth. But, uh, anyways, we've got uh, Defiler. There we go. Dark Storm <laughs> on the ramp. Not going to be able to breach there. And a lot of tanks actually coming out from Fantasy. Fantasy just all over the board here. I think he just... He just wants to tech switch. Dude, Fantasy, I've, I've, like you said, he's been known for some creative builds, but like he just, he just loves the tech switch. He just, he shows something, and then in the background, he's like, all right, what, what can I do next? What can I do? And like he, he's completely open to do whatever he wants. But like, 
you still got a macro man, but he uh, again he hasn't been contested with that ball in the middle there, so he doesn't really need to macro. He just needs to keep that thing alive and do his tech switches and just kind of have fun, I guess, with the game. It is a game after all. But uh, ooh, another overlord almost going down there. But uh, yeah, so fantasy not scouting at that bottom right, not actually doing. He killed a lot of drones, but not actually doing that much economic damage. Ball in the middle here, getting caught out. And uh, Defiler getting picked off there, completely ineffective there for uh, Hiba. Uh, and there we go, finally scouting it out. We're going to see if he does anything about it, though. Yeah, I mean, the, th the problem with what Fantasy has now, he's going to spread, so he's going to go to that fourth, quickly annihilate it. There is an Idas Canal there, but I don't think there's enough units there to actually contend with that many bo that bo Or one swarm would do it. One swarm and one... One swarm, one plague, and one zergling would clear that out. But the thing is, now fantasy is starting to expand. I believe there, the, the lower right-ish. But that's the problem. He had that big army. It hasn't been killed. If it would have been killed, he would have been in, in trouble because the zerg would have been able to replenish his forces and actually try and push back. Because fantasy's macroing well, but those kind of armies, that ball, if it's nicely surrounded, the problem with this map is of course the huge open ground uh, that expansion now finally is going to go down, the Nidus Canal hasn't even been used yet but it's slowly dying, Marine not really caring for it, but it's the second one so do something with it then Hiva. So yeah, Swarm's gonna go down again, look at him, how concentrated and how awake he is and now gonna go for that, the Hive didn't die, that's very important otherwise this would have been rather grim um, but no, in Swarm apparently the Marines are still killing things, what the hell are you doing, Fantasy? So anyway, that expansion is still alive, it's still mining, not dead yet, so he's taking his sweet time with that. It's gonna, well yeah, depend on that. If, um, yeah, Fantasy's gonna be on his fourth soon, he's gonna be expanding and he's going to be macroing from that. He's now going to go for the other expansion at the same time, and I think Hiva doesn't know where to attack first. He doesn't, well, where to defend at least. The, the fantasy all over the map, and it's very hard for a Zerg player to actually coordinate an attack when you don't know where the freaking army is, because you need the defilers there, you need the surround there, you need the lurkers, you need everything. So, yeah, he's now going to try and take the main, but it's not going to work, is it, with three lurkers and the Zergling? Yeah, he's all over the place. I think Hive is slowly but certainly dwindling here. Losing his expansion has got nothing to show for it. No damage. Remember that those mutilisks that started the game did no damage whatsoever to Fantasy's economy. So this is basically, I think, the perfect opening, the perfect follow-up to what Fantasy was planning for. Yeah, I agree. This is a little bit strange, obviously, but I mean, I expect strange at the from uh, Fantasy, but... Yeah, it's just fantasy.